Welcome to this presentation on computer storage. The objectives for this presentation are to understand what computer storage is, to look at the types of storage device available, to understand how to measure storage, to look at the types of storage including magnetic, optical and solid state storage, and to look at some future storage technologies. According to the Free Online Dictionary of Computing, storage is a device into which data can be entered, in which they can be held, and from which they can be retrieved at a later time. And according to the Hamlin Dictionary of Computing, storage is a memory device or part of a computer system in which data and programs are kept for further use. So we can see from these two definitions that a storage device is designed to store data for some period of time and to allow that data to be retrieved at a later time. So now let's have a quick look at the types of storage technology available and how we can classify them. There are two broad categories of storage, volatile storage and non-volatile storage. Volatile storage loses the stored data when the power of the computer is turned off. Non-volatile storage retains the data when the power is turned off. An example of volatile storage is random access memory, RAM. Non-volatile storage can be broken down into three discrete technological groups. These are magnetic storage, optical storage, and solid-state storage. Magnetic storage can be further broken down into floppy disk drives, hard disk drives, and tape backup devices. Optical storage can be further broken down into DVDs, compact disks, and Blu-ray storage devices. Finally, we can break down solid-state devices into read-only memory, or ROM, and flash RAM. So, as we previously saw, we can categorize storage as volatile or non-volatile. With volatile storage losing the data when the power is turned off. And non-volatile retaining the data when the power is turned off. If you think about it, this makes sense. If you have a program running, and then you switch off the computer accidentally, that program will no longer be running when you start the computer up again. Before we look further at the types and technologies of storage device available, we now need to understand how to measure storage. If we are going to measure something, we have to have units in which to measure that quantity. The smallest unit of measurement of storage is a bit. This is simply a 0 or a 1, a binary digit. We can group 8 bits together to form a byte. If we group 1024 bytes together, we have a kilobyte, or KB. If we have 1024 kilobytes, we have a megabyte. Grouping 1024 megabytes together, forms a gigabyte, or GB. And finally, grouping 1,024 gigabytes together produces a terabyte, or TB. However, be aware that some manufacturers, when quoting the size of their hard disk drive, will use 1,000 megabytes as a gigabyte. This is just so that their drive actually looks bigger than it really is. So now let's have a look at some of the technologies that can be used to store data on a computer. The first of these is magnetic storage. Magnetic storage is the most common type of storage technology found on computers today. Some examples of devices that use magnetic storage include hard disk drives, the main permanent storage of a modern PC, floppy disk drives for storing small files in emergency recovery work, and tape drives for backing up large quantities of data. Magnetic storage works by changing the 
magnetic polarity or direction of an area of the storage medium. Magnets can have one of two polarities, north or south. This corresponds nicely to the zero or one of digital data which modern computers use. In the example below, a southern polarity represents a zero and a northern polarity represents a one. So you can see we can encode binary data and store it on a hard disk, tape or other magnetic media. Now let's have a look at some common terminology you'll come across when purchasing or configuring hard disk drive. The magnetic media on a hard disk drive is broken down into tracks, sectors, clusters or blocks and cylinders. Each platter of the hard disk is laid out much like a dartboard. The concentric arrangement of circles are called tracks. These tracks are broken down into sectors. The file system groups together a number of sectors to create a cluster or block. This is the smallest unit of storage that the file system can allocate to any file, no matter how small that file may be. A cylinder is a vertical grouping of tracks on a number of different platters within the hard disk drive. Sometimes it's easier to understand these terms when looking at a diagram. The diagram on the left shows four platters arranged on a common spindle inside a hard disk drive. Here we can clearly see the tracks, the sectors dividing those tracks, and the cylinder for the external track. For the diagram on the right, we are here looking down on top of a platter, and we can clearly see the tracks running around in a circle, and also the sector, which is part of a track. When you look at a hard disk drive, though, what you'll see is merely the external casing and the connectors on it. Here we have a serial ATA hard disk drive. The next common type of magnetic storage device we'll look at is the floppy disk drive. Over the years, floppy disk drives and disks that fit into them have come in a variety of shapes, sizes and storage capacities. However, today you'll pretty much only ever find the 3.5 inch high density drive available. This can store up to 1.44 megabytes of data on a normal floppy disk. As you may already be aware, this is a very low capacity of storage by modern standards, and therefore it isn't used that much nowadays. One area where it is still used, though, is for troubleshooting a computer when it does not boot. Here we can see a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive on the left, and a 3.5 inch floppy disk, or diskette, on the right. The final type of magnetic storage device we'll look at is a tape drive. High-speed tape drives are used by businesses to back up data usually held on servers. The tapes themselves look a little bit like the audio tapes or the VHS video tapes you may be familiar with. However, most of them are now digital. They have different storage capacities up to about 1.5 terabytes per tape. Accessing a tape is much more complicated than accessing a disk drive. Usually this requires specialist software. It's also worth bearing in mind that tapes are not random access like disk drive. If you want to find a file at the end of the tape, the computer will have to seek all the way to the end of the tape to locate that file. This can take quite some time even to retrieve a very small file. Here we can see a variety of different tapes laid out on top of an external tape drive. For scale, a 3.5 inch floppy disk has been placed on the right. The next type of storage technology we'll look at is optical storage. Optical storage devices are read and written to by means of precisely controlled lasers. The most common types of optical technologies around today include the compact disc or CD, the digital versatile disc or DVD, and recently the Blu-ray disc. 
In an optical drive, the disk is marked with a series of pits and mounds. The pits and mounds on the disk reflect the laser light differently, allowing the pits and the mounds to be recognized as zeros and ones. In the example here, a one is represented by a mound and a zero by a pit. So you can see we can easily encode binary data onto a CD or other disk by means of this mounds and pit. As with every other type of storage technology, there are a number of terms you need to be familiar with. The first is ROM, read-only memory. This indicates a device or disk can only be read from and not written to. An R indicates that a disk can be written to, but only once. If you wish to be able to write a disk, erase it, and then write to it again, you need an RW, rewritable disk. With Blu-ray technology, this is referred to as RE. If you want to be able to read and write data to a disk in a random manner, much like you would with a hard disk drive, without having to completely erase the disk before writing new data to it, you would use a RAM, random access memory disk. When purchasing a drive, you will notice that the speed of the drive is measured in times, or X. So, for example, a CD-ROM drive might be said to be a 52 times, or 52 speed drive. This means the drive is 52 times as fast as the very first CD-ROM drive that was released. Often you will find that multiple speeds are quoted for a drive. For example, a drive might be quoted as 52 times 16 times 4. When seeing speeds quoted like this, the read speed is always quoted first, then the write speed, and then the rewrite speed. Generally, a drive will always read faster than it can write, and write faster than it can rewrite. Now we'll look at some specific optical storage technologies. The first of these is the CD. This is the most common type of optical storage technology on older computers. It can store up to 700 megabytes of data per disk. Read-only, writable, and rewritable drives and media are commonly available and very cheap. CD drives have been largely replaced by DVD drives on modern computers. This is due mostly to the low storage capacity of the CD drive. The next type of implementation of optical storage we'll look at is the digital versatile disk, or DVD. This can store up to 4.7 gigabytes of data on a single-sided, single-layered disk. Dual-layered disks are available that can store twice as much data as they have two recording surfaces. However, a special dual-layer drive is required to write to these disks. Modern DVD drives are often described as combo drives because they combine many functions in one device, such as CD-ROM, RW and R, and also DVD-ROM, R, RW and RAM. All of these functions are available in a single device. However, there is a complication with DVD technologies. There are two implementations of the DVD standard available. These are plus and minus. DVD minus was the original writable DVD technology. This was later joined by the PLUS standard. This has a number of advantages over the MINUS standard. It allows for on-the-fly formatting of RW disks. This means that you did not need to format the disk before writing data to it. Additionally, the write process can be suspended and then continued. With the MINUS technology, this would have led to a corrupt disk. Luckily, most modern types of drive can read and write both types of disk. However, if you are looking at an older computer, you may need to bear this in mind when purchasing media for that computer. The final type of optical storage technology we'll look at is called Blu-ray. This is the very latest in optical drive technology, and as such is very expensive. 
It can store up to 25 gigabytes of data on a single layer disk and 50 gigabytes of data on a double layer disk. As this is the very latest technology, prices are currently very expensive. However, they are falling rapidly. As of late 2008, you can get Blu-ray ROM, R, and RE drives. The final type of storage technology we'll look at is solid state. There are two main types of solid state storage. Read-only memory, or ROM, and flash RAM. The term solid state refers to the fact that they have no moving parts at all. This makes this a very reliable and robust technology. Both types of solid state storage rely on a variety of transistor-based technologies. Read-only memory is memory that can be read from but not written to. The data is written to the ROM chip when it is in the factory and can never be changed. Previously, it was commonly used to store BIOS on expansion cards, such as graphics cards. However, as technology has advanced, this is being replaced by flash RAM in many cases. Flash RAM is a read-write form of solid-state storage. It retains data even after the device is switched off. The most common implementation of flash RAM is a USB flash drive. This is replacing the function that used to be filled by the floppy disk drive. However, you can find flash RAM in many other technologies nowadays. For example, the BIOS on a modern motherboard is stored in flash RAM. This allows it to be upgraded at a later date if required. As of late 2008, you can get flash RAM commonly in sizes up to about 16 gigabytes for a USB flash drive. Now that we've looked at some common technologies you'll find in modern computers, what about the future? Demands on storage grow ever greater, and as the demands increase, so does the technology required to meet those demands. It is likely that soon hybrid hard disks will become common. These combine the functions of flash RAM and a modern magnetic hard disk drive. The flash RAM is used for storing commonly accessed data. The magnetic storage portion is used for storing less frequently accessed data. Looking much further into the future, large quantities of data can be stored via holographic storage. This will store data as solid state cubes that can be read by lasers. To summarize what we've looked at in this presentation, we looked at what is storage, we looked at different types of storage devices, how to measure storage. We then looked at in detail magnetic storage, optical storage, and solid state storage, before briefly mentioning some future technologies. This ends this presentation on computer storage technologies.